Okay, hello everyone. Let me fix my weird hair. <laughs> hello, it's Catherine Massell. Knock, knock, hello. Who's there? Elevated Consciousness Coach, 5D Visionary. Hello, we are in day two of creating inner strength. Today we're talking about how to build trust. You can see my beautiful little birthday flowers in the background, aren't they lovely? Okay, let's see. Hello, Lenore. Maria's here. Hey, hey, hey. Angela's here. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, lovely ladies. Welcome back to day two. Let me take a minute here. You know, the growing out of a pixie cut is just not... It's not fun. Courtney, hello. Tara, hey, hey, hey. Tammy's here. Hello, all my friends are here. I love it when all my friends gather together. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello, hello. Heather's here. This is going to be a good day today, you guys. We're going to we're going to dig a little deeper here. We're going to talk about Something that might be an uncomfortable analogy for you, but it's a very good analogy all the same. So we're going to go there. Yes, we are going to go there. Creating Inner Strength, Day 2. So if you have not watched Day 1, that is the Lay the Foundation call. So you're going to want to go back either in this group and search hashtag Creating Inner Strength to find Day 1. Or, easy peasy, if you're on my email list, I'm going to send out all three days to you tomorrow after our final day three call. Hey, Catherine. Um, so if you're on my email list, all you have to do is go to CatherineMassell.com. And if you're on my homepage for even like six seconds, a little light box pops up. And it is an, a prompt for you to enter your info to get on my email list. And all three days of the replays will be sent out tomorrow afternoon. I'm in Washington State, so this is U.S. Pacific time. So around 2 o'clock tomorrow Pacific time, you'll have all three days of those replays. So you're going to want to sign up to my email list before then. Otherwise, you can find them on my YouTube channel, Catherine Massell on YouTube. That's me. I have hundreds of videos there, including, you know, all things spiritual evolution, Elevated consciousness, heightened ascension awareness. I got all kinds of good stuff on that channel, so check that out. I will have those replays up there as well. And you can search Creating Inner Strength for all three days of the videos here in the group. Okay. Hello, Nicole. Hey, Catherine. Okay, so we got a bunch of us here. This is great. So... If you have friends in the We Are New Earth group and you want to tag them, uh, feel free. I'm going to actually do that myself. Because <laughs> I know that there's people who wanted to watch. So yesterday, just a quick recap, we were talking about what that key piece is to creating inner strength. Literally the foundation for creating a greater sense of personal resolve fortitude, self-belief, okay? It is about going back to that trust piece. Everything, I think, I believe, ripples out from a cornerstone of trust. And it's not ever an outward projection first. It's always an inner resonance, first and foremost, for everything. Everything that gets created on the material plane is always an inner to outer conversion. Always. It is about an inner resonance, an inner decision, an inner resolve, first and foremost. Nothing gets affected in the material form of 3D on this reality, in this reality realm of 3D time space without 
some sort of inner resonance, inner shift first. That's for everything that gets created here. Everything starts as an idea. And even before it's an idea, it starts as a vibration. It starts as a frequency. Okay? Everything is energy, frequency, vibration, right? And so here in 3D, we are the creators. We are, we are creating from our own speech. We are creating from our own ideas. We are creating by taking action because, as we covered in yesterday's day one call, the 3D reality realm is an action-based realm. It's a physical realm. Hi, Chelsea. Nothing happens here without action. Okay, it is, everything here is driven and perpetuated through action. Okay. So when we're talking about then understanding this foundation, I'm not going to go over all the details of the call yesterday. Please go back and watch day one if you want to really be able to get yourself up to speed with what I'm talking about here. The trust piece is everything. We don't really take action on anything or create changes or create major shifts in our reality without the trust piece in place. And trust me, I've been doing this work for about 23 years now. I've seen it over and over again. Okay. And it's not that you're trusting things outwardly to take hold so that you can feel good enough and trust yourself enough then to take some action that you haven't done before. If you're endeavoring to do anything different with your life, and a lot of us, let's face it, we have a lot of big visions for 22, 2022 and beyond, right? And so when we endeavor to do something different, we're branching out, we're, you know, we are endeavoring to do something different with our lives, something we have not done before, something that feels bold, something that feels courageous, something that feels a little bit scary, but very exciting. We erroneously want to place trust and belief on outward situations showing up to support us in that. But that's where we get it backwards. Because that trust piece is not trusting that things will show up out there. They will. But first and foremost, you have to trust yourself that you have all the inner resources to make something happen. That means that you have an inner resolve that this happens because I feel capable. I believe in myself. I trust myself. No matter what external stimuli, external influences might be dictating otherwise. And we talked about that in depth yesterday too. So it always comes back to this cornerstone, this foundation of building inner trust. You got to trust yourself no matter what. No matter what might show up as a trigger, another challenge, another issue in your life, do you trust yourself? Do you deem yourself capable to handle it no matter what? So today's talk is really about, yes, building trust, but I want to simplify this for you because I feel very strongly that everything right now is about simplification. Here's what we do as humans in this 3D time-space reality, okay? We complicate things. Much of our identity, how we derive and perpetuate this illusion of separation is in fragmenting ourselves from source. So we are all from the oneness. If there is one spiritual higher truth with a capital T, it is that we are all one. We are all part of the same level of unity consciousness and we are essentially consciousness experiencing itself through Catherine, through Heather, through Lenore. Okay? And we arrive at this level of separation more and more over time throughout the duration of our lives by continually fragmenting ourselves even more. All right, you might be on board with I am consciousness experiencing myself as Chelsea. But then what else are you? Well, I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a good girl. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a musician, right? I'm, I'm someone who frequently makes, makes mistakes. Um, I'm a PhD graduate. Like we continue through these labels that we 
garner for ourselves over time, throughout the duration of our lives, we fragment ourselves even more from source. We separate ourselves more and more and more. Okay. And we do this continually through the thoughts that we have about ourselves too. More and more, we might have, you know, thoughts about ourselves. Well, I'm not, oh God, I woke up today and I just, I don't feel ready. I don't feel good enough. I'm not here to really greet the day with vim and vigor. I feel defeated before my feet even hit the floor getting out of the bed in the morning. And we establish for ourselves just another level of separation by, I don't feel capable. I don't, I don't feel like I have the stuff to get through the date today. I don't feel like I have what it takes to have this, you know, family meeting or gathering with my mom, my sister, whatever. I don't feel like I have what it takes to show up at this meeting and bring, bring the good stuff today. We fragment more and more and more over time, okay? And this is an important piece because the more we continually fragment from source and we compartmentalize and categorize our life, the more illusion of separation is intensified in our lives. Like it really stings, the sense of separation. And we end up feeling really, really isolated. And we feel much, much further from source. We feel much further from the oneness, right? And the more we do this, the less we trust ourselves, the less capable we feel, the less supported we feel. Because then we feel like that, that support, that love, that compassionate witness energy, it feels that much further from us. And we kind of swindle ourselves into this thinking that everything we need is then outside of us. It's further away from us. We keep fragmenting and separating through self-discounting, self-diminishing thoughts. I talked about this in great depth and detail yesterday. And so any of us who are asking for something big to happen, any of us who are asking for something to experience that we have not previously experienced, maybe it's a, a soulmate partner, maybe it's a business venture, maybe it's more money, uh, maybe it's a new house. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's, that's incidental, what the, what the thing actually is. It's about the energy of, here I am over here, but I want to be this person over here. More separation, right? And it just becomes this continual series of ways to separate ourselves from source. Our wants and desires, by thinking that we have to be a certain person, you know, and we kind of do because we have to be more of who we were meant to be. We don't need to become someone else. We actually need to strip away of all the things that we are not. We just need to be more of who we were meant to be. So it's, it's more of a deconstruction. It's not about becoming someone else or changing yourself. It's about stripping away all the layers of what you are not. Okay. This becomes a really, really difficult convoluted process because think of how many ways you have fragmented yourself from source by the labels you give yourself, by the labels of what you are feeling in any given moment, by the labels of what you would say your role is in a family, in society, etc. We have lots of different ways to like keep compartmentalizing ourselves, keep fragmenting ourselves from a feeling of oneness. Okay. And the worst kind of self-betrayal is that in our own inner world, which is very complex and very deep and very profound and often very convoluted with a lot of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs about all that we are not, we fragment ourselves in our inner reality often. When you woke up today, what was your go-to thought? When you were in a challenging situation at some point today, what was your go-to thought? Was it something that was self-supporting? that builds self-trust? Or is it something that erodes your self-trust and self-belief and self-support? Our cognitive bias, when we are in this place of feeling so much separation by how we compartmentalize ourselves, label ourselves, see our roles in society, have our own inner dialogue, inner monologue with ourselves, it's just more fragmentation. It's more separation. And the more separation we feel, the more we delegate to the ego to try to give us advice about what to do next, how to proceed, how to move forward. And as I mentioned yesterday, this part of you has no idea 
how to proceed into unknown, uncharted territory. The ego can only give you information about what is and what has been, something that is part of your experience individually or something that is or has been part of the collective experience. The ego can only give you information on what has been. It has no purview, no domain, no advice to give, no directives to offer when you are saying, I want to do something different with my life, something I've not experienced before, or even better, and many of us are having this feeling, I want to do something that's never been done before by anybody. A lot of us are having incredibly creative impulses when we're honest about that. But then we squash that right away by having some self-diminishing, self-discounting thought where we argue for our own diminishment. So when we're in this level of ego, we're just operating in the same bandwidth, very contracted level of consciousness and awareness that does not allow us to evolve into anything new. And certainly with not, without um, a great deal of fear, right? Because the ego, is, it's not bad or good. And we talked about this yesterday. It's just programming. The sole design of ego is to keep you safe, to keep you alive, to keep you functioning, keep you going and going like the Energizer Bunny. That's it. That's all it's programmed to do. It's, it's not programmed to give you courage and a bold confidence to leap head first into new endeavors or adventures. It's not programmed to support you in that at all. And yet we keep delegating to this part of self, hoping that it'll do that for us. It's not going to fucking happen. Okay. And I talk about this all the time because we learn through repetition. I mean, you got to be who you are through habituation and repetition, waking up and living your life on repeat over and over again, subject to the same thoughts and beliefs and feelings you have about yourself over and over again. It created a personal reality, a personal identity for you, a definition of self, because all these thoughts, beliefs, uh, feelings, they were on repeat, right? And it's the same way we create anything new that we can anchor into and habituate going forward. It's got to be a re it's got to be something on repeat. We wake up every day and do the same thing over and over again. The problem is, is we're trying to wake up in the morning and say, "I want to do this today. I want to I want to really start this thing. I want to get this ball rolling with this." And yet, we have the same thoughts about ourselves, the same beliefs about what's possible, and the same feelings about who we are over and over again. So whatever is the stronger energy there, and it's usually what you're habituated to, that's going to win out. That's going to win the day. So it doesn't matter how much you want this new way of being, to have this new thing, you want to fulfill this new desire. That doesn't matter. All that matters is the vibration that you're holding. And the vibration that you're holding is made up of the continual thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that you have on repeat that are just in, they're just programming. It's just in the background of your life, constantly going. And if we don't check that, get that in check somehow, you're not going to have a different experience of reality. You're just not. So in the theme of trying to simplify this for you, let that be very simple, <laughs> okay? You can't hope for anything new and then keep vibrating at who you are. Nothing changes if nothing changes, in other words. So let's simplify that right off the bat. Okay. So when we're talking about building trust, if you are trying to create something new, do you trust that you have the inner resources, that you have the capability, that you believe in yourself enough to make it happen? And here's an interesting thing that it might blow your minds a little bit, but it's a fantastic analogy and it works really, really well to know how we sabotage our own best efforts to improve our lives. So do you guys know what Stockholm Syndrome is? Are you familiar with that term and what it is? It is a psychological condition. It's an emotional response. And it is something that it actually occurred. It was a bank robbery in Stockholm. I think it was in the 70s. And it was a six-day event where the captors, the hostage takers, had created a, a very 
kind of, well, codependent, really, because the, the, the hostage takers needed the hostages to be able to secure their own release safely. But the hostages de developed an emotional response of empathy and sympathy for their captors. Okay. And when we are talking about creating something new and we have a thought, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to, you know, start on this new program, this, this new whatever. It might be a diet. It might be a way of having a, a daily journaling exercise so that you can make more money or, you know, start doing something to learn or research about starting your own business or whatever it is. And you have the best intentions off the bat. You have the, the best ideas. You have creative impulses. You feel the excitement and the drive and the curious anticipation, which I talked about yesterday, about something new coming along for you. And while you're still basking in the glow of that energy, you will have a thought. Yeah, but, but this. Yeah, but remember when I did that before and this happened. Remember that one mistake, though? I really fucked it up that time. Oh, man. That one failure or several failures or that time I did that. But also, this is happening in the world right now, so that's not going to work out. And we end up with the captors in this situation, which are our own self-discounting thoughts and beliefs. We end up sympathizing with those captors. We end up arguing in favor of, then, our own captors, which are our own, own self-sabotaging beliefs. Can you see that? Nicole says, yes, complex trauma bond. It's a very complex trauma bond. And when we are talking about our own inner resonance, our own inner reality, and the support that we would give ourselves to trust ourselves, to believe in ourselves, to feel we are capable, to forge a new and exciting and bold path for our lives, right on the heels of that creative impulse, right on the, you know, the afterglow of that excitement, we have these habituated conditioned thoughts of our own self-diminishment and self-discounting come right in. Like every single time. Right? So the emotional response of a Stockholm Syndrome is really similar to this. It's, it's the same thing. It's created by conditioning. And you have this Stockholm Syndrome-like response. We're holding ourselves hostage by the thoughts that we have that don't support this new vision. We are suffering through a lack of self-love, a lack of self-belief, a lack of self-trust, and we become too weak to resist it. Because lack of self-love, lack of self-trust, lack of self-belief are strong forces within us, very strong. They're so strong, in fact, that they will talk you right out of you doing this, this new thing. Whatever, you, whatever it is you do, it doesn't matter what the thing is. If it's new, it's bold, you haven't done it before, you will find a way to talk yourself out of it. If you allow the self-love, the, the, the lack of self-trust, the lack of self-love to take over, because these are very strong forces within you. And so we're holding ourselves hostage, meaning we are unable to move forward. Doesn't matter how exciting that thing is. It doesn't matter that we basked in the afterglow of this amazing idea that we had, this amazing inspiration. We're unable to move forward. We're holding ourselves hostage. We are arguing in favor of our own captors, which are our self-diminishing thoughts, our extreme lack of self-trust. Does this resonate for you guys? your self-limiting beliefs, captors, the habits and actions that you take to keep you right where you are, captors. And based off of memories that we have of the past, of where we failed before, where we made mistakes before, we, where we committed egregious errors against ourselves before, the ego will bring this up, highlight it, put it in high contrast, high relief so you can see it. 
And it's just, it's just the ego doing what it's supposed to do. It's just the programming. It's designed to keep you safe, keep you in what's familiar, keep you in similar territory. Does that mean that the, the emotional response that we have to that ego giving us evidence of where we fucked it up before, does that mean that it's real? No, it does not mean that it's real. But our response to it, that emotional trauma response that we have to it is very real. So the dismantling, the deconstructing of the story of <laughs> our, our own failures, the story of our own past mistakes, the story of where we fucked it up before. If we don't deconstruct this, if we don't unwind ourselves from the story that we keep telling, good luck creating anything new. Good luck. If you're able to do it and stabilize it and keep it going, let me know because I want to know how you're doing it. <laughs> okay. It is a loop and it's an exhausting loop. It's an exhausting loop, right? And you know, what we talk about in Timelines Expanded, and those of you who are in that program with me, we talk about how we think we're progressing on a linear continuum here in 3D time, but it is really anything but. It's a, it's a loop that we create because we timestamp a way of being with an emotional response to something. And if it's a similar emotional response that we might have to anything new that's happening, we are suffering in the illusion of that we're moving forward, we're progressing. But we keep time stamping our experience with the same emotional response, usually from trauma, over and over again. So create, we create consciousness loops. It's not actually a linear continuum at all, right? So this is a game we play with ourselves. And we think that, you know, when we get rolled up in this kind of thinking and we start talking ourselves down from the elation, the ebullience, of this creative endeavor that we would like to do. We talk ourselves out of it. We empathize with our captors of our own self-limiting beliefs and thoughts, etc. It's a game we play with ourselves. But what will happen is we'll be convinced that, well, then this showed up as a block or a hindrance. You created the block or the hindrance. You think something is against you in your outer reality showing up yet again to prove you right, to prove the ego right, really that you can't do this, you can't have it, it's not meant for you, blah, 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 blah. You already created the inner resonance for that obstacle to show up. You did it. There isn't some God in the sky that says, Chelsea shalt not have a divinely led life. So let's fuck up her day, put this thing here. There's nothing outside of you doing that. And the greatest illusion is that nothing exists outside of your inner reality. Not really. So those obstacles, those things in your path that just coincidentally show up right when you start having those self-limiting beliefs again, the same old patterns of thought over and over again, and something coincidentally just shows up to block your path forward. It's not a coincidence. You created it. You put it there. I'm breaking this down so you can see how we create our reality and how we literally create the limitations of our evolution. It doesn't matter how much you're asking to progress forward. It's more about what is the stronger energy in your inner resonance, in your, your inner belief system about what's possible. And if it is in any way, shape or form, I'm going to fuck it up again. This isn't meant for me. I can't handle this. You will manifest obstacles. You'll actually create them because that's how evolved we are as creator beings. <laughs> if you really don't want something, and basically, you, here's, here's the rub. When we say we want to do something new and we, we know and we can see and we can feel and we can visualize how it can take our lives forward in a really positive direction. But I have to ask you, and here's where we simplify it again. Why don't you want it? Because if you're manifesting obstacles in the path, you don't really want it. And there's a stronger energy or resonance within you that's afraid of it, thinks you're not capable of it, thinks you can't handle it, thinks you don't deserve it. And whatever is the stronger energy, I can't emphasize this enough, 
that will win out. So the vision you hold, the higher ideal and expression that you hold has to be stronger than the habituation, the conditioning and the program of all the things that you are telling yourself, which you are really not, but you just got conditioned to believing that's the story of you. So whatever's the strongest energy, folks, is going to win out. And I have allowed myself to feel and live in pure bliss, but yes, yes, and yes. And it's fleeting, isn't it? When we have those, <laughs> we have those moments where we do manifest something, we create this higher ideal and we're living in it. We're living in the center of it. We're living alongside our desires. And there's that thought again. Gee, I wonder when this is going to end. Gee, I wonder how long I get to hold on to it this time. I wonder what interesting thing is going to come along and fuck this up. When is the other shoe going to fall, in other words? Right? And it can be fleeting. Our joy, our bliss, living inside of, alongside of our desires. So it's a game we play with ourselves. There is no, you know, God or force in the sky saying, <laughs> you know, Nicole is only allowed to be this happy and that's it. Connection here. Stay with me, guys. All right. I don't have the best internet today, apparently, but stay with me here. So it's a game we play with ourselves. Nobody is holding you hostage. You are doing that. You are keeping yourself from moving forward. So let's simplify. Again, let's, let's simplify. Stop arguing with yourself. Stop arguing in favor of your captors. I finally declared that I do not need permission or acceptance from any of my family. Y you don't. Of course not. Their response, reactions towards seeing me evolve into a new being are on them and their own inner work. Always. I don't have that time for that bullshit. Yeah. I reassured my inner child and my ego. We're okay and we're doing this, so buckle the fuck down. I talk to my ego all the time. I talk to my ego all the time. Because I'm, I'm, I'm doing things and I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone in a lot of different ways. And sometimes you have to talk your ego off the cliff. <laughs> if you're doing something new and you're doing something bold and you haven't done it before or no one you know has done it before, it's going to feel really big. It's going to feel colossal. It's going to feel like a behemoth. And so all of our captors, our self-limiting beliefs are going to rush to the fore. It's really an effort to rescue us from something that feels unsafe because the, the, the chemical cascade that gets released in the body, when we have a level of excitement like that about something new, it's very akin to what we feel in a fight or flight response. Not always, but a lot of the time. And remember what I talked about yesterday, the second you desire something new and you can see it, visualize it, you're fantasizing about it, whatever, your shadow who loves you so much, and it's just another fragmented part of self that we thought we could send, to, send away, we can't ever, will rush to rescue you. Yes, your shadow rushes to rescue you. And it will show you, okay, great, you want all this stuff? Here's exactly what's keeping you from it. Because that's how much your shadow loves you. We think our shadow is here, again, like this external force to muck up the works. It is not. Your shadow loves you. Your shadow is a part of you that's screaming for integration. It's screaming at you to be included in your reality again. And to the, to the degree that you experience shadow so intensely in your life as an opposing force is to, is to the degree that you're trying to still push it away and saying, you're not part of me. Your shadow is very much a part of you. You learn to betray yourself early on and create this shadow for yourself. So I talk to my ego all the time. I talk to my shadow all the time, if you want to call it that. And we think of shadow as darkness. It's actually, and, and Jeffrey, who's not here today, brought up an excellent point that 
your shadow is just as much of a part of you as your God self, because you're never not your God self. You're never not that infinite, eternal part of you. You will lose this mortal coil at some part, but you go on. You are infinite. You are eternal. You keep going. You keep evolving. You are consciousness itself. At the moment, and it's a temporary blip in your soul's journey, you are experiencing yourself, you're experiencing consciousness as Nicole, as Lorian, right? So you are never not this infinite and eternal part of you. We just think that it's separate from us. We think we're not in communion with this part of self. We are all the time. It's just that the ego voice is, is screaming and throwing tantrums in the background like a toddler <laughs> to get our attention or try to rescue us, as the case may be. So it's always the loudest voice in our heads. The God self avatar, our eternal infinite nature, the intuition, if you want to call it that, is a subtle energy. It's much softer. It doesn't need to scream and fight and throw a tantrum to get your attention. Okay. And it's always just like the ego is programming in the background, running behind the scenes of your life all the time. So is your God self, your, your highest avatar programming. And this is a good segue because this is what I want to talk about next. So simplify. This is about simplification. Stop arguing with yourself. Stop arguing in favor of your own captors, your own self-sabotaging beliefs, thoughts, behaviors, self-limiting feelings. Uh, in the last few months, I felt more love for my ego than ever before. Yes, right? How I learned to start loving my shadow, that should be the name of my in alignment program. <laughs> because we learn in that program, yes, those of you who are here and in that program, we learn how to love our shadow. We learn how to have a different conversation with it. We learn to see that this is a part of, of self that we thought we could send away. We can't. We just labor under the illusion that we can send away undesirable or unsavory parts of self. We, we can't ever do that. And to the degree that we think that we can and we're in more resistance with it, the more that shadow self will scream and yell and throw tantrums. And literally what it's asking for is for you to integrate that part back into you, into wholeness. How I learned to start loving my shadow should be the, the subtext for the in alignment program. <laughs> Simplify. Stop arguing with yourself. Stop sympathizing with the abuser. Your own inner critic. Your own inner judge. And we all have our own unique saboteurs. You learn about that when you take the In Alignment program. And we've all got a top two or three that are, that are mostly at work. Their own archetypes, their own flavor, their own personalities. Saving us or rescuing us from... The, the challenges in life, the, the trigger events in life, but they're only and ever there asking for integration. They are parts of our shadow. They are just archetypes that present themselves with certain characteristics and traits. And we all have our own unique set of them. But at the common denominator, the foundation of who those saboteurs are and the self-sabotaging behaviors are is the inner critic, the inner judge. And we all have this because we all have ego. So stop arguing in favor of this inner critic because the inner critic's kind of a loser. The inner critic is like the Eeyore. You guys remember Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh? It's the same kind of energy. Nothing is ever good enough, right? And when you are arguing with your inner critic and your inner judge, you're arguing with a part of you that you're never going to be worthy enough to measure up to the inner critics, the inner judges standards. You're never going to be happy enough. You're never going to have enough of anything. Money, love, friendship, support, doesn't matter what it is. And yet we continue, continue to argue in favor of this inner captor and it will win the day if we allow that energy to keep being strong. If we keep listening to it, if we keep agreeing with it. So we have to deconstruct and unwind this story. And in order to simplify this even further, when you have those go-to beliefs, when you're endeavoring to do anything new, we have usually a set of go-to beliefs, a set of go-to thoughts. And they're always self-limiting. What are they? And how did they get there? How did they get there? 
I have an incredible, very in-depth process that I share with the members of In Alignment where we go, to, we go to our own origin story, in other words, how we learned to betray ourselves, how we created our shadow, where our ego inception took hold. And when we do that, we deconstruct the story of who we are. Because largely when we endeavor to create something new and it's not happening or we have it for a little bit and then we sabotage it, it's because the story of who we are or who we think we are takes over. And it becomes a strong energy is because we've thought it about ourselves for decades. But there is an origin point, I call it the original cause event, that it happened. And we kind of just built off this more and more and we fragmented ourselves more and more based on this original cause event. We learned to betray ourselves very early on. And yes, we had players in that game. We might have had abusive parents or a, a foster household or teachers even could have been friends on the playground. They were just the role players that assisted us in creating the story for, their, for ourselves, but they're not responsible for it. We're responsible for our own self-betrayal. No one else is. You're responsible for the story that you created about yourself that you keep telling to yourself. No one else is. Some other human gave you an assist so you could create and tell this story for yourself, but they're not responsible. And they're certainly not responsible for you changing it. Okay? So building trust. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Be present. You can only and ever really change the trajectory of your life, unravel the story, deconstruct who you are by being present with when you want to do something new, something bold, something different, something courageous, what are the thoughts that come in right on the heels of that elation you feel about something new and different? Because I guarantee it's a set of go-to self-limiting thoughts and beliefs. Be aware of them when they're there. Make peace with them. Having this curiosity about why is this here again? Why is this thought showing up again? Do I really believe it? Do I really believe it? Do I really believe that I'm not worthy? Yesterday we talked about, you know, the worthiness piece, which is a total facade. It's a total lie. You are worthy. You are inherently worthy because you are God eternal in a body because you are the entirety of consciousness itself, consciousness itself experiencing it in a pinpoint reality, a punctured reality of the consciousness that is now Nicole, the consciousness that is now Lorian. You are a pretty fucking amazing <laughs> creation because your, your consciousness experiencing itself as this unique individuated thread of consciousness, this creation that is Lorianne, this creation that is Jante, this creation that is Chelsea. There will never be anyone else like you. That's fucking phenomenal. And yet we talk ourselves out of our greatness daily, several times a day. And we come up with evidence from the ego and the inner critic and the judge, which we know is a loser. <laughs> It really loves us, but it acts like a loser. It acts like it can never have enough. It can never be enough, right? When we are in those moments of being present with the thoughts that come up right on the heels of doing something different and exciting, and we can catalog them and have acceptance of, okay, it's here. Here's that thought again. Thank you, inner shadow, for showing me exactly what is in the way of me having what I want. It's up to you to dismantle it, to break it down, to de-story, destroy, de-story, shatter that belief. Because it's not true. It's ultimately not true. You really feel like you're not good enough, like the universe has singled you out to not have something great. Do you really feel that's true? Like when we break down some of the thoughts that we have, they're, they can be kind of ridiculous sometimes. And I still do this. I do this all the time when I'm, again, doing something new, doing something that's exciting and whatever. Me, you, and everybody else will come up with a thought right away that's like, oh, I can't do this because. Because something is happening in the world, you know, in, in society or 
uh, it, I, I'm not allowed to go here or there. I'm not allowed to say this, or I'm being muzzled for this, or you know, my family won't understand it, or whatever. We come up with a million fucking reasons, aka excuses, for why we can't have, be, or do the thing. But is it ultimately real? Do you really believe that? I endeavor to be the knower of God and to then be the way shower of God. Ooh, I love that. That's a beautiful declaration. So in those moments, it's about having the curiosity of, okay, why is this showing up again? And it takes the sting and the intensity out of it when we greet the same old saboteur, same old self-sabotaging belief or thought with a sense of curiosity, it neutralizes it. And it also kind of stops it in its tracks before it can gain any momentum and do any more damage. The curiosity piece, hmm, why would this be showing up again? What is my shadow asking me to really look at here? Simplify it. And then break it down. Destory it. Take it out of the story. Take the story of you as someone who's not worthy out of rotation. If you don't know how to do this, I have a whole program around it. It's called In Alignment, and it's phenomenal. It's not like anything else out there. It really isn't. It's very unique, and it's very one of a kind, and it's a very in-depth program. It deconstructs the old story of you. And then it's also the entire program is an activation. So simplify it again. When you're in those moments, uh, you know, you can take the story out of it. Take the belief out of your story of you. Because it's not really real ultimately anyway. But don't try to push it down. Like I always use that analogy of whack-a-mole. Remember that carnival game whack-a-mole where you have like a, a mallet and a little mole keeps popping up and you have to keep smacking the mallet down. Well, that's you trying to squash the ego. That's you trying to kill the ego. You can't do it. It just pops up somewhere else. That's you trying to kill your shadow. You can't do it. It just pops up somewhere else because the ego and the shadow, it loves you. It, it wants you to keep going. The problem is the ego is just programmed to just keep you surviving. But what your shadow is really trying to show you is like, well, here's how you stop just surviving and getting through the day, getting through the week. If you remove this, if you integrate this part of you that is screaming at you, asking to be integrated and processed as part of you, bringing it back into wholeness, then you can move into thriving. Then you can move into flourishing well beyond just surviving. And you also have an opportunity to simplify things and build trust by focus on, focusing on what is working. What is working? Keep your eyes on what you're doing and the progress that you're making and what's working for you. Where are you building momentum? Where are you creating some sort of consistency around what you're endeavoring to do and change and, and, and where you are designing improvements in your life? Where is that working? Again, we have this cognitive, cognitive bias towards the negative. It's just a survival programming to focus on what isn't working. What's keeping us from surviving, in other words. But that doesn't mean that there aren't absolutely incredible things happening all the time that are working. So it's about a shift in your focus and it creates a shift in your energy. It creates a shift in your resonance. When you focus on the things that are working out. Where are you creating that consistency? Where are you showing up for yourself and building self-trust? Where are you believing in yourself where you hadn't before? These are improvements. Who cares how fucking nominal they are? Let go of this idea that we quantum leap. And that, you know, but other people are like making these huge strides in your life. This is the other piece, okay? Do not focus on what anyone else is doing. If you really want to simplify your life and take a lot of angst, out of your life and remove the temptation of the inner critic, the inner judge chiming in and ruling the day even more. Stop comparing yourself to what other people are doing. Didn't I just mention how incredible you are and you're one of a kind and phenomenal and you are one pinpoint, one thread of individuated consciousness experiencing itself as Lorianne, as Jante, as Chelsea. You're phenomenal. You're one of a kind. There will never be anyone else like you. So how can you possibly compare what you are doing to what someone else is doing. Stop it. 
It makes no sense. It is a ridiculous waste of energy. It spins your wheels and depletes you of energetic potential that you could be using towards creation. And instead you're using it towards limitation. You're contracting your own energy. And what you are doing when you are too focused on what someone else is doing, oh, they're quantum leaping. There's no such thing as a quantum leap because even in the quantum realm, there are incremental movements towards quantum shifts. Ask a rocket scientist if you don't believe me. And I think more of the quantum leap is something that we use in, in, like, in terms of personal growth areas to kind of illustrate like, oh, but you're over here, but you could be over there tomorrow. It doesn't really happen that way, folks. It just doesn't. Be focused on the incremental upgrades that you're making over time that feel good, the things that are working out, the things that are taking your life in the direction that you want. Take your energy, focus, attention, and awareness off of the things that are not taking you in that direction. What you focus on grows, right? Focus on what's working. Because ultimately what, what you want is things that are going to be working or in your favor, creating improvements in your life that you have not seen or noticed or felt or experienced before. Does this make sense? Are you guys getting this? And when you are comparing yourself to others and what other people are doing, like, oh, I'm kind of like her, you know, maybe I should, I should be having that experience. Why am I not having that experience? The second you do that, you erode self-trust. The second you compare yourself to what someone else is doing, being, or having, you erode self-trust. So you are eroding the very thing that builds the foundation of anything new going forward. And we do it to ourselves. We betray ourselves every single time. We compare our progress, what we're doing, where we're at, what we're thinking, what our business looks like. We are eroding self-trust. And we continue to st tell the story in the eyes of the inner critic instead of our God self, right? The only comparisons we should be making are looking at where we were yesterday versus where we are today. Stay in your own lane. Keep your eyes on your own paper. <laughs> like when you're taking a test in high school and you might have peeked over at somebody's paper. Don't do that. Quit doing that. Keep your energy in your own lane. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And anywhere you're saying, well, I should be here, it feels like I should be there, there's that comparison piece again. There's that ego again. Elevating into higher consciousness and being in an evolved state of being, if you want to call it 5D, an energetic realm that's beyond the fourth dimension, Comparison as an energy, as a frequency, it doesn't exist because there isn't, there really isn't any such thing. So why not prepare yourself now for your elevated consciousness by deciding to leave that out, the comparison bit. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard to not look at what other people are doing in the marketplace. And it seems like, you know, you look at social media and everybody's life is a giant fucking highlight reel of how amazing their lives is. Most of that is a facade anyway. It's not real. It's marketing. It's advertising, okay? <laughs> it's not real. And everybody on this planet is having a fuck my life moment at this particular time, believe me. They may not be candid about it, but I pretty much guarantee that that's happening in one way, shape or form, right? And building trust, the last piece that I wanted to bring in here about building trust is that something happens that's really wonderful when you are allowing yourself to be in flow. Being in flow with the moment, being in flow with what is. It's a moment to moment willingness to be guided. 
So a lot of times when things aren't working out and I feel like it's just an invitation to have my inner critic win the day once again, I focus on what the belief is coming up I mean, I really want to simplify this and break it down. So if you want to take notes on this, please do. Focus on the belief that's coming in. You know, what has entered into my present awareness? First of all, I accept that it's there. I don't try to squash it down or <laughs> make it go away like whack-a-mole because then it just comes up somewhere else. I accept. I take a deep breath and I say, okay, this is here. Isn't it interesting and curious that this piece is here again, that this belief is coming up? I thought I had dealt with that. And you don't have to beat yourself up or judge yourself for having the belief, the best energy you can have is to be curious about it because it neutralizes it. It takes the sting and the intensity out of it where we would normally, our go-to would just be go, going into more of the inner critic and the inner judge, right? So be curious about it. Okay, interesting that this is there again. Do I really believe that that's true? No, I don't really believe that's true. Okay, all right, good. Okay, how do I feel now? Okay, a little clearer but I don't really feel aligned with the momentum I'm creating or whatever. So what, what's working? Okay, well, this is what I did yesterday. Where can I build off of what I did yesterday and do more of that today? Where can I really build momentum? And the only way we build momentum is creating some sort of consistency. What we did yesterday, where can we do that again today? And maybe just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more. It could be making a list of something. It could be, you know, writing down some new beliefs that counter... Those old beliefs that keep coming up, the old story of you, okay? Doing anything that takes action on where you are going versus corroborating and validating where you have been is consistent with momentum, taking you in the direction that you want to go in. Don't worry about how big the shift is in creating this momentum. That is incidental. It doesn't matter. It's about consistency. It's about momentum because the real changes happen with the resonance that you are holding every day. If you're bouncing back and forth like a ping pong ball every day, like I'm in the momentum of my inner critic today and I'm just I'm marinating and languishing in old stories, thoughts of me, past mistakes, beating myself up over past failures. And then the next day, like, wow, I'm really making strides. Woohoo! And then the next day you go back to the old story of you again, you're not creating consistency. You're creating a very confusing broadcast to the universe. Well, I'm this person one day, but I'm that person the next. And then we scratch our heads and wondering, we're wondering why we're not fucking getting anywhere. It's about consistency. It's about momentum. And there are coaches that will tell you you have to take big steps forward. I will tell you something that I have found to be true. A lot of times we take huge leaps forward and we move into a place of like, it's a super toxic, hyper-masculine energy of feel the fear and do it anyway. We end up in sabotage city. So those inner saboteurs that I talked about, we all have like two or three that tend to rear their ugly heads when we're in really uncomfortable territory. They will attempt to rescue you from painful situations, from triggering situations. And then you'll end up back at square one anyway. It's more about the consistency that you create and drive momentum forward through something you do every day. Let go of how big it has to be because some days you're gonna be aligned with doing something big. It'll feel right. But if you're pushing because, I don't know, you have a, you have a coach or you read a book and it says, do this huge thing. And if you don't do it, you're a piece of shit if you don't do it. So you better do it if you really wanna create change. And so you push yourself into a really uncomfortable territory Without laying a foundation of, of really good self-trust, really self-belief, you're in Sabotage City. Trust me on that. I've seen it over and over and over again. Okay? Creating momentum through consistency. Something you do every day that drives you towards this ultimate goal, this directive. Okay? The other thing is being moment to moment. So a lot of times if I, if I do these things and I still feel like, I just don't know what to do next. And then I call in my God self and I say, God self, God self, God self. I'm kind of floundering here. I'm floundering here. I need help. Call in your spirit team, call in your God self. I like to go right to the source. So I call in my God self and I say, okay, show me. Show me, lead me, guide me. I promise to be present 
I allow myself to be led. I promise to do my part. And it's always understanding that it's a co-creative endeavor. You're not doing any of this alone. You're not doing any of it alone. So ask for help. You know, you might feel it's a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's a sign of weakness to keep putting on that face of strength that I was talking about yesterday in the call while you are suffering and struggling inside, but wearing a brave face anyway and feeling the fear and pushing through anyway, trying to push through and get our goals like a bull in a china shop. It's very lopsided, very toxic masculine energy, okay? A willingness to be led, a willingness to receive guidance is very feminine and in a divine feminine sense to allow ourselves to receive, to allow ourselves to be led, to allow ourselves, in other words, to be helped. Because we often labor under this illusion in this you know, this society that is insane, it's still pushing this narrative of being highly productive when literally every part of society has broken down and shut down, but yet we still have this sensationalistic idea that we have to be productive all the fucking time. How does that work in the world that we're in right now? And we gotta pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and really commit and do it and force something to happen. Holy hyper-masculine, toxic masculine energy of pushing. Whenever we create something in integrity, we do it from a place of balance. So there is nothing wrong or weak or inept or incapable about you asking for help, asking for guidance, asking to receive some breadcrumbs from the universe. Correct? This is how I dance with ideation, love, compassion, and grace. Okay, she's here. I wonder what she has to tell me. Yes. What else is here? What, how does she appear today? Right. Did she bring anyone or anyone with her? These are great. Everyone read Nicole's comment here because this is wonderful. And there's that curiosity piece that I was talking about. Asking the what if questions. What else is there? Is there something else I need to be looking at? Where could my attention be uh, better serving as far as what I could focus on right now? Where, I could, where could I have my awareness better focused elsewhere at the moment? And it's a willingness to be in the moment and be led. You can't ever do this unless you're willing to be present. Now, I want to give you an example from my own business, and then I'm going to close this out. Because maybe you guys can resonate with this. So being in flow and a willingness to be led moment to moment is a willingness to be quiet, to create an inner stillness, and to be in a place of neutrality. That means that no matter what's happening, outside of me, whatever external influences, whatever fuckery is going on in the world, I can maintain a level of response instead of reaction. There is a neutrality. Meaning there might be some new fuckery at work, but I won't allow myself to be triggered because I trust myself to be able to handle whatever is happening. I trust myself to be capable in, face, in the face of any external perceived challenge or issue. I believe in myself to have all the inner resources already intact so that whatever comes my way, I can handle it like a boss. I'm capable of seeing a lot of different sides of it instead of only vi visualizing it or seeing it from my place of wounded trauma, which is how we often perceive our lives, okay? And this willingness to be led and be in the moment is about presence. It's about stillness. And if I'm in this place of trust and I'm really putting my money where my mouth is and cultivating this foundation of trust, I trust myself, not things outside of me. I trust myself. It's an inner decision that I'm making that no matter what happens, it's okay. I got it. And why might this be showing up? The curiosity piece, it helps to neutralize the energy. If you're feeling really triggered, triggered, go right to curiosity. It will take the sting out of it right away. I guarantee it, but you won't know unless you play with it yourself. Why might this be happening? Why might I be having this particular response to this thing at this moment? Why might this theme be presenting itself again? Why might this kind of person be showing up in my life again? 
instead of, oh, fuck my life. Again, really, I thought I dealt with this. How many, how many days did I spend on shadow work, blah, blah, blah. That's your inner critic and your ego taking over. Do you guys get the difference? And so the I, I've talked about this a few times, but at the end of 2021 and, and going into the, the first couple of weeks of, of 2022, um, I felt really taken down. <laughs> I felt really taken down into, I wouldn't say really, well, maybe I would say, I'll go ahead and say it, very low vibration energy. I felt really put upon by the world. I was having a pity party for a minute. I don't ever languish in that energy for very long. But I was, I was having a pity party moment and I was feeling like I have no idea what to do in my business. Normally, I'm, I'm so first of all, I'm a Capricorn. Second of all, I'm, I'm very hyper vigilant with my business. I am a prolific content creator. Um, I have Facebook posts that I can write off at the drop of a hat. Um, I can talk about things, create live talks about anything and everything, elevated consciousness. I always have an ability to, to be a live channel. That's one of my gifts. Um, so that I can talk about anything, write about anything, create any content about anything at any given time. But at the core of that, I need some sort of direction. I need, I need a topic, right? I need, I need something that is a driving force towards, well, how do I talk about this theme, et cetera. So at the foundation of what I would write or content I would create or anything like that, I was lacking that direction. I was completely devoid of like, I don't know where to take my business this year. Normally I'm pretty good at being able to look, you know, 10 steps forward. I'm able to plan out content courses for at least four to six months out. But all of that felt so resistant for me. That felt like that toxic masculine energy I was talking about, like be productive no matter what, like create something, churn something out. Like who am I if I'm not churning something out? I can't value or love myself or believe in myself or trust myself unless I'm being highly productive. And I was like, whoa, what is all this stuff coming up? It's time to just strip everything down, get still, go into neutral energy and just be, and just be. So I took anywhere I felt put upon, anywhere I felt like I have to do this, I have to create something, I let go of all of that. I deconstructed the story of you know, I'm only as good as a, as a business person and as a thought leader if I'm creating this content or doing this thing or providing this value or offering this service. I destoried that, took that all out of the rotation and any emotional attachment, emotional response I had around that or where those thoughts became my captors and I was holding myself hostage to this ideal that felt really resistant to me at the time, I let it all go. I was like, okay, universe, God self, I surrender. I get it. Right now, I'm open to being led. I'm just going to take the step forward that feels right and aligned in the moment. After that, I don't know what happens. I don't need to know what happens. I'm just going to take the step forward that feels right in the moment. Now, for a Capricorn, that's a tall order, okay? <laughs> for someone who's a hyperachiever and hypervigilant and a controller, those are my biggest saboteurs. That's a, that's a tall order. That is a lofty goal. But I did it. I did it. Because everything else filled me with resistance. Everything else filled me with a sense of this is wrong. This is not aligned. This is not aligned. Because it's all about alignment, guys, at the end of the day. That's why I have a whole course called In Alignment. And so everything that I was doing, everything in my personal life, in my business life, I was willing to be led. And I was willing to just take a step forward that felt right in the moment. And then when the next moment came along, what's the next step? And the next moment came along, okay, what's the next step? Is this an easy thing to do? No. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Because this feels 
more in alignment with that buoyant, lofty, airy, beautiful energy that I talked about in yesterday's call that's aligned with the New Earth timeline. That hyper-productive, bull in a china shop, feel the fear and do it anyway energy is like the cement blocks attached to my feet, keeping me from rising up with that beautiful hot air balloon energy that I used as an analogy yesterday. Does this make sense for anyone else? Does this resonate with any of you? And so a lot of us feel like, it's not that I'm not creative. I, I feel creative drive and creative impulses, but the way I go about creating and the energy I put behind it to create it, I kind of want to ignore all the stimulus of like, feel the fear and do it anyway, and be productive and do this next best thing and write this crazy marketing and promote it like insane and, and do the, all the advertising around it and make all these big claims around it. Like none of that feels aligned for me. Maybe some of you can resonate. Does that feel aligned for you guys too? So simplify it, break it down, try it for a few days. Try just being led. It's a very highly receptive, extremely divine feminine energy. And if you're struggling with this, I offered a, a meditation yesterday, a guided journey called the Golden Tapestry. And it's divine feminine and sacred masculine balance. And really entering into an elevated consciousness perception about whatever we're manifesting, whatever we're creating, it's about the balance of those energies. It's no longer about that lopsided, hyper-masculine, toxic masculine energy of push, 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 produc production, 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 constantly be producing something, no matter what, whether it's good or not, <laughs> right? It's really about finding this inner balance because the whole manifestation template of the entirety of, cre of creation in this 3D reality realm is shifting as a result of these lofty, buoyant energies of the New Earth timeline. And so the more we resist being in that sacred feminine energy of receiving, allowing ourselves to receive help, allowing ourselves to be led, the more we'll be in that lopsided manifestation template of the old Earth. Does this make sense? Yes, have been back and forth with the feeling I need to just get going, hyper energy, and the definitive knowing this is the creation stage right now for me. But there still feels like a, a push and a resistance there. And it's not, you know, a lot of us will feel like, oh, well, that's just fear. Um, I'm really afraid of this new outcome or whatever. A lot of the times it's not. A lot of the time it's just, it's not in alignment to be in this energy of pushing to be in this energy of let's churn something out no matter what the fuck it is. It might not even be of value to anybody because it feels forced. And anything we create that doesn't come from a sense of inner alignment, it's going to be lopsided. It's going to carry a signature of not being in the highest resonance. So we got to pull it back. We got to simplify. Okay, where do I create this balance within? Right? Yeah, and it, it'll feel like fear. It'll feel like fear, but a lot of the times it's not fear. It's that we're not in alignment with creating this way anymore. Think about that. Chew on it. I, again, you know, take whatever resonates. Whenever I do these talks, whenever I share anything, take what resonates and leave the rest. But all I ask is that you have an open mind and open heart and suss it out for yourself. Chew on this. Be with it yourself. And... Decide what's true for you. And ask yourself, there's that curiosity piece. Why am I resisting moving forward this, with this project, this endeavor, this new creation? What if it's not fear? Because sometimes it's better to ask, like, what if it's not fear? What if it's, what if it's just not in alignment? And, you know, a lot of us are in this hyper survival state because there are a lot of triggers in every part of society that are, you know, talking about shortages, lack, scarcity and loss. There's that old earth timeline grasping and gasping its last breaths before it dies out. 
So that's why we have such severe and extreme messaging around scarcity, lack, and lost loss. You know, the no food on the shelves in the grocery store and supply chain issues and all this other stuff. There's so many messages of lack out there. Do you really do you really believe that? I don't. I don't. And a lot of it is mainstream media messaging designed to keep us in this place of acquiescence. And a lot of it is for control, manipulation, and domination of our consciousness. I, I don't I don't hook into that. And you can decide, again, make that inner decision. And it always comes back to this trust piece, you guys. I trust I have all the inner resources to do whatever I endeavor to do. And that if I trust myself and I believe in myself that whatever I need to show up to support that for me in the external world, that's naturally part of that inner trust I already feel. And we don't, we don't live in a universe of lack. These are completely false constructs. And to be honest, the reason why these messages are so pervasive, so intense right now is because this is the last gasp of a dying timeline. And what we know about collapsing timelines is they are felt most intensely before they die out. And you don't have to buy into it. You don't have to buy into the fear. You don't have to buy into the messaging. You don't have to buy into the mongering of fear porn that happens on the daily. You don't have to buy in or hook into any of that. I have made that inner decision from a place of deep self-trust that I don't do that. It doesn't serve where I'm going. It doesn't serve where you're going. Right, and the Valentine's Day shelves are overflowing, right? Exactly. So we have to, again, be in that curiosity piece. Like, how can this be true if over here there's this? There's a lot of conflicting messaging right now. And if you're willing to be led and you're willing to be present and you're willing to be in that moment to moment, you'll see this stuff a lot more. <laughs> Chocolate is a necessity. I kind of second the old paradigm stuff. And so that brings up an excellent point, Nicole, because a lot of us are sick and tired of the old paradigm, the old structures that were not very supportive. They might have been for you know, the bulk of the few on the planet, but not for the story of the many, right? A lot of the old structures and paradigms that are dying out were designed to benefit the few, not the many. And those of us who are excited about new ways of being, we're like, phew. Don't let, don't let the doorknob pitch your ass on the way out, old earth timeline. Bye-bye, right? So can you be brave enough and can you trust yourself enough? Can you build the trust even more by allowing yourself to be led, allow yourself to be in the flow of moment to moment? Try it. Try it for a few days. It's very liberating. It's very freeing. And this is something we're also going to be discussing quite a bit in the uh, Strong Supported Healer group. And many of you are, are joining us in there. I wanted to say, I don't think I mentioned yesterday, that we're going to close the doors on this on February 1st because I want us to all start together. And then we start this two-month container on February 2nd. So if you guys want to get in there, do it now. Do it now. And this is a, a completely like say yes investment because it's only 188 bucks for two months. My coaching packages go for three to four times that. Um, but this is an inspired thing. And this was part of me being led was offering this because it was completely spontaneous, completely in the moment, completely inspired. And it felt aligned to offer this and to be a beacon of support in this group container, this group coaching program. And if I was in that push, push, push mode, I'll be honest, I probably would have offered something that was like, you know, a $2,000 package or whatever, but that didn't feel aligned. This did. But I wanted to say that the, if you wanted to do the deeper work here and you want to really build self-trust, part of, part of being in self-trust is investing in yourself. Because when you're investing in yourself, you're saying, I trust myself to be capable with the change. And a lot of the, the ways we get mixed up in, in um, moving forward, progressing forward, and we think it's fear, it might be a little bit, but it's more of a feeling that we don't trust ourselves to be capable with this new level of change. So yes, there's some fear in there, but it always goes back to that trust issue. If you don't feel capable or some, of something, if you don't feel that you have the ability to handle change, you won't invest in yourself. 
because you don't trust in yourself. So when you invest in yourself, and I know there's a lot of people who love to watch you know, free programs and whatever, and you get something out of it, and you, you get something out of attending free live talks and discussions, and I know that many of you here like to do that, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But what I am saying is if you are desiring real change, and many of you, I know, you hold a big vision for 2022, I, I, will, I will just ask you, where do you not trust yourself enough to invest in yourself? Because the, the, the free stuff, it only gets you so far, folks. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, I, it's true. Investing in yourself is a measure of self-trust. It says, you know what? I'm going to plunk down my money and I'm going to do this thing. And it's a, it's a level of self-commitment. It's a level of self-dedication. It's a level of self-belief. It's a level of self-trust. And, and the investment, it's, it, oftentimes you think it's about the money. Like, oh, that's too much money. It's often that you don't trust yourself to be capable of handling the changes that come as a result of investing in a, a self-improvement program. I'll just be honest. Again, I've been doing this work for 23 years. I'm not talking out of my ass here. I've seen it. And, and I don't get asked for refunds too much anymore. I actually hardly ever. But when I used to, and I used to allow refunds, it wasn't that the work itself wasn't taking the people towards the results that they were asking for. It was often that the person who had plunked down their money started seeing the change start to happen, started to see the story of themselves start to crumble, deconstruct, dismantle, and it scared the shit out of them. Feels like both to me. Sure, absolutely. But the trust piece, yes, the fear is at the, the, the core of that at a deeper level, but the trust piece is that you can definitely 100% believe in yourself to handle whatever comes along. And if you really want to work with that, the In Alignment Core Program, it's being in this program is not only a deconstruction, but it's an activation. And then you are self-led through this program to actualize with the tools that I give you. It's a very, very powerful process. So working with me in, the, in that particular program, which I'm gonna be teaching it live again on the 10th of March, but you can get in the self-study now and, and start getting results now. But the results really happen when we trust ourselves. And you learn to cultivate and build that in this program. Absolutely necessary to invest in ourselves and our growth, and especially at a time where I know many of you are asking for something far bigger than you've ever done or, you know, fantasized about before. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So you might have these grandiose ideas, but if you are still operating in the same story of you and you haven't deconstructed it, found out the origin cause of how that got there, that story of you and all the behaviors that continue to perpetuate the story of you, that big lofty goal that you have, it's not going to come to pass. I'm just going to be honest. I'm a truth teller. So I wanted to put that out there. There's two ways to work with me. If you loved what we've been bringing in in these two days so far, if you are a female visionary thought leader, business owner, the strong supported healer starts on the 2nd of February. It is a completely fuck yes investment price of 188 dollars $188 for two months. I don't know how you can say no to that. So the doors close on that on the 1st of February because I want us all to start together. The In Alignment Core Program is for those of you who are holding a big vision for yourself for 2022 and beyond and you have no idea how to create alignment with that because whatever we bring in, whatever we create is because we have alignment with it. This whole program is designed to deconstruct all that you are not and to activate you in the energies of the new earth timeline and into your master timeline and to give you the tools to be self-led for growth. So this is for the highly committed. This is for the highly dedicated. This is not a hand-holding experience. I don't teach or mentor that way. Okay. 
But this is for those of you who are hitting your head against the wall like, I don't know how to change this. Well, In Alignment Core Program is for you. In Alignment and Thriving. And then we're going to start teaching it live again on the 2nd, sorry, 10th of March. Amazing program. And there are many of you in here who are in that program. Hopefully you can back me up on that. Tomorrow we are going to meet a little bit earlier. It's going to be at 1130 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday. Um, Because my husband is taking me to do something special. The birthday fun continues. The the week-long birthday gala celebration continues. My husband's going to take me to do something fun. I don't know what it is. Um, So I'm going to do the call a little bit earlier. So 1130 a.m. Pacific time, we will meet for our final day three of creating inner strength. I hope you'll join us. If you got some juicy tidbits out of this, something really stuck out, your your ears pricked up, your higher self, your God self paid attention, go back and listen to this, okay? And if you want all the replays sent to your emails, you can listen to this entire series again. Make sure you sign up to my email list before tomorrow, okay? Thank you, Jante. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I I desire to invest far beyond my current capacity. Me too. That's where I'm at too. I'm always working with coaches. Always. Just because I'm a coach and a mentor myself doesn't mean I don't work with coaches. I'm always working with one or two at any given time. And I'm not afraid to invest beyond my capacity, which is what Nicole said. That's a great way to word that. So... I will see you all tomorrow, I hope, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time right here in We Are New Earth Group. Thank you, everyone, for being here and being live with me. I always love the company. Love and peace.